Welcome everyone to another broadcast of Today Christian Speaks. I'm Tony Coleman. I'm going to be your host today. I'm doing solo today, but normally we would have somebody in the studio with us as we go through some of the things we need to go through in order to teach you what God would have you to know. I'm so honored to be a vessel. I'm honored that God would count me worthy enough to even do something like this and to say some words uh, before you. And not only saying words before you, but I live the life that I teach you about. I thank many of you for joining me on Facebook. Facebook has been a blessing. Uh, many of you on Facebook has ha have rather really uh, been encouraging to me and asking me not to quit. And not that I want to quit. I would never quit because the unction and the spirit of God has the, the the means to keeping you going, pushing you to go forward, pushing you to get greater and greater. Again, you're watching Today Christian Speaks. I'm Tony Coleman, your host. I truly honor God today, God Jehovah. I honor his son, Jesus Christ, the Savior, and the Holy Ghost, the keeper, the power of God which is what we all who say we are believers need in order to continue the work that God would have us to do. Um, I'm so honored to uh, be able to have the things that I have to be able to do something like this. Only God put me in this position. I remember years ago, I never had uh, camera equipment or even thought about doing a broadcast or even thought about talking about the living God, but you can't help but to talk about the living God when God has transformed your life from the life that you used to live to the life that I live today. It's very important to follow the steps that the Bible says to follow. First, you get delivered. You get born again like Nicodemus and many of you have uh, read the story about Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And he told Jesus, he asked Jesus, how can a man be born again? And he, Nicodemus was talking about the natural birth. Jesus was talking about being born again in the spirit, having a new spirit, having a new heart, having a new mind, having a clean bill of slate, just like a baby. Baby is born. He doesn't know, um, he doesn't know right from wrong when he's born. But when you're born of the spirit, you don't know what God's will is. You don't know what God's commandments are. You don't know how God is going to move, how God is going to bless. So when you get born of the spirit, you have to be taught how to live. I'm so blessed to be taught by men and women who live the life that the Bible talks about. And for 30 years before I could even do anything like this, I had to go under the training, hardships, troubles, disappointment. Uh, I did things I should not have done, but I repented for it and kept going. I didn't give up. And I remember a couple of times when I had did something that hurt me so bad until I got on my knees and, and, and cried out to God. And God, the Spirit of God, told me to get up. The Lord has forgiven you. Get up from there and you rise up above that. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't stay there and wallow and say, oh, well, what's the use? As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about the commandments of God. There are so uh, there are a very few people that I meet today that really don't obey the commandments of God. There are so, uh, so many who take the word of God and rearrange the word of God to fit their lifestyle, to fit the things that fit them. For instance, um, I've talked to many people and when I share with them what the gospel says about fleshy things or things that may attack their lives and things that they're doing behind closed doors and in darkness, they tell me that 
all have sinned. Then they'll, they'll use the scriptures to talk about if any man say he have no sin. And so they take these scriptures as to say it's okay for a man to sin today and to live in that life of sin. I'm here to tell you that that is not the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't come here for us to continue to walk in a sinful state. Jesus came to give us power to overcome the sinful state. There are many scriptures that tells us if we obey God, this would happen and that would happen. It would happen good if we obey God. But if we disobey God and don't keep his commandments, there would be terrible things that would happen in our lives. So we want to talk about the commandments of God and how you should stick with the commandments of God. It's important to, to walk upright before the Lord. But before I do that, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray and bombard heaven because it's important for God to be before us and you. Father God of heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for being so good to us in this life. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for your commandments. Thank you for Jesus who died and shed his blood so that we could have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, Lord, for giving us power. Thank you for your Holy Ghost. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for delivering us from sin and sinning. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for those men and women who stood before you and lived a life so that we can read about the life and correct our lives. I thank you so much. I honor you. I praise you. I glorify you for being such a wonderful and mighty and powerful God. I thank you today. Word my lips so that the people will know that your word is right and there's no other word. God, I thank you today. I honor you. I praise you. I glorify you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Once again, you're watching Today Christian Speaks. I am Tony Coleman, your host. I'm so grateful that you tuned in to watch me today. You know, it's important for us to know God's word for ourselves because there are so many people that are preaching and teaching things that God did not tell them to preach and teach. As a matter of fact, if you go to the 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus will tell you about the events that's going to happen in the last day. As a matter of fact, let me go there and read that for you. That's um, Matthew 24, and I'll begin reading at the fourth verse. This is important. And listen really good. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Jesus was talking to the disciples, and they were asking him about the temple and uh, what was going to happen to the temple and what was going to be the end of the world. And Jesus began to answer them and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Now, if you look at that really good, he didn't say, don't let the devil deceive you. He said, let no man deceive you because the devil is a spirit like God is a spirit. But God uses man and the devil uses man. Jesus, in other verses, he would talk about you are of your father, the devil. So the devil has children and God's got children. God's children obey him and the devil's children obey him. And there are many churches and I know you've seen I've even posted some of these other churches. Who put on all these crazy shows and put on all sorts of things right in on Facebook. And many of you say that is not godly and they are being deceived by the devil and their pastor. So Jesus is saying, let no man take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let nobody deceive you. Know this word for yourself. God put this word down here for us to follow the word of God. Now we must know his word and we must know when the enemy is trying to divert us from that. But let me tell you this. I must say this. I hear a lot of people talk about in churches, talk about the enemy and the devil and what the devil wants and what the devil will do and what the devil won't do. If you read God's word, 
you will see based upon the commands of God that if you obey God, God always gave his people the victory over the enemy. But you must know the commands of God in order to overcome and be victorious over anything that comes in your life. So it's important to know the commands of God. And I'll keep reading for many. Now, this is Jesus talking for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. Now, one thing I've learned is when you tell people what they should and shouldn't do based upon the word of God, they'll go back in and get a scripture to make it seems like what you just told them in the word was wrong and their scripture is right. And usually they're trying to cover up some sort of sinfulness or some sort of corruption or something that they're not up to part with. So they use that scripture to get you to think that they are right and you are wrong. Well, if many of you have studied the word of God and you go back into the book of Genesis, the same thing that the serpent did to Eve in the garden, he's actually doing the same things today. Um, I've had many encounters with a lot of different people. And they get angry when you talk about their personal sins. Now, many times I don't know people's lives. Even when I go to other nations and I minister to other nations, I tell them even before I start teaching and preaching, I don't know you. I don't know where you come from. I don't know what you do. I've never talked to your pastor and asked your pastor what you're doing. So if you hear something, believe me, you, it's coming from heaven. I don't go with a wrote out message and try to write some message out to give the people because if I'm doing that, that is me giving them what I think and what I feel. But I rely on the word of God in the Holy Ghost to give me what you need. And believe me, you, when he gives something to a man, people are doing what people say they are doing. Now, I'm not one to go out and try to uh, make people think that I have so much in God, that I'm so indwelled and I get all knowledge and wisdom. I don't ever want to think people to think that because I know that there is wisdom, greater wisdom that God got for every man that I may need. But what I go out to do is rely on God to feed me so that I can feed you his message, his word. And then I've studied enough, not enough, but I've studied plenty times so that the word can infuse me. Excuse me. The word can be inside of me and impact my in. Uh, oh, excuse me. But the word can be inside my heart enough so that God can use it so that I can give it to you. But we're talking about the commandments of God, listening to the commandments of God and not the commandments of men. So again, Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Now, this is a command for us to take heed and know uh, how do you know when a man is deceiving you? There's another scripture that says, he that was sent by God will speak the words of God. And he that loved me will keep my commandments. When you love God, you will keep his commandments. Jesus said that. If a man love me, he will keep my commandments. He won't give them up. And Jesus will never tell you to do something that you could not do. You can keep God's commandment. Don't believe what people say because people change it and say no man can keep his commandments. That is not the truth. That's a lie. And that's not from heaven. Anything or anyone who comes and rearranges what the scripture said you could do and they say you can't do is a deceiver. That person is trying to deceive you and that's not what you want. You want somebody to tell you the truth and the truth can hurt sometimes. The truth can make you feel bad. But if you hold on to the truth, hold it deep down within you based upon God's word, you'll never go wrong. You will never go wrong. 
Amen. So the other scripture, I'm going to read another scripture. Now, this is Jesus talking. This is Matthew 5 and 19. Matthew 5 and 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. And shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus talking about. I have to teach you the commandments, but not only teach them to you, I have to live what I'm teaching you or else I'll be considered a hypocrite. And there is something about a man and a woman when they teach you something they're not doing. There's no anointing. There's no power. There's no direction. Amen. And even your life when you live. When you stay in that sort of ministry where people do don't obey God's word and teach you the same things that they don't do. Life is horrifying for them it gets it gets worse because the bible says the way of a transgressor is hard it's hard your life will be hard people and it's and, and god is not the kind of god that um just every day bam this will happen every day bam that'll happen every day bam this will happen things will happen gradually to get to let you know you are on the wrong track because there's a difference when God tries your heart and when God is putting punishment on you for disobeying him. There's two different things. But remember, you must, whoever's teaching and preaching to you, you got to find out if they're living the life that they're preaching about. Because you don't want to be deceived. These are the days when deceivers, preachers are preaching, preachers are lying, preachers are deceiving, preachers are giving you something more than what the commandments are saying. When the commandments are saying don't do this, they do the opposite. More churches today are worldly than ever before, giving you all kinds of programs, uh, all kinds of music and singing and singing and singing. And then when it comes time for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be preached, people get up and walk out. They don't want to hear it. They're too tired because they sing and they sing and they dance and they shout. I often tell people, you can have the singing, and there's nothing wrong with singing. You can have the dancing and there's nothing wrong with dancing. You can even have the going around speaking in tongues. You can have that. Amen. But I desire the word of God because the word of God is the power of God. Amen. And I'm going to read that scripture to you as well. The word of God is what gives you the power and the know how and the wisdom and the instructions to get you from one place in life to the next place in life. Did you not know when trouble and trials and tests and things come in you, you've got to have the word of God that directs you out of whatever you need to go through. It takes the word of God in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost to get you through what you need to go through. Dancing won't get it. Dancing is not giving you instructions. It makes you feel good, but it does not give you instructions in righteousness. Somebody has to teach you by word of mouth. Singing does not give you instructions in righteousness. Singing won't get you where God wants you to be. You got to have the word of God. That's the only way. The word of God. I want to go to Hebrews real quick. I want to read that for you. Amen. Let's see, I think that is Hebrews 4 and 12, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Hebrews 4 and 12, a very familiar scripture to many of you. And I want to show you what's important for you. The word is more important than knowing the commands of God, knowing what God expects from your life. And you do these things. When God says do, do what he says do. When God says don't do, 
Don't do what he do. Did you know there is revelation in God's word and God's word can open up your mind and take you into life that you never thought existed. It can reveal things to you that you cannot reveal to yourself. It takes the word of God. It takes a man of God that has the spirit of God. There are people who are preaching and teaching don't have the spirit of God. Some people went to school and don't have the spirit of God. You need a man or woman that has the spirit of God baptized in the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody tell you that you don't get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody tell you you don't speak in tongues. You will speak in tongues. As the scriptures have said, see, people are saying things opposite to what the words say. The words say this would happen. You know what some people say? Some people say, um, that passed with the apostles. That died out when the apostles died out. Well, everything died out when the apostles died out, if you think about it. But you're reading what the apostles did. So evidently, God left us enough word for us to follow this word and to follow his instructions, just like the apostles. The apostles had the spirit of God. They didn't walk just according to their own self. They, was, they were led by the Spirit of God. And the same Spirit that the apostles had, God gives to us. Jesus even said, a man must be born again of the Spirit of God. It is the same Spirit that they had that you should have. So why would God stop things there? That means all of us are going to hell. There is no spirit of God if we listen to what other people say. But you got to have the Holy Ghost, the, the, the power of God. It got to come and do the work in you. The same work that it did for the apostles back then. He's still saving souls. He's still delivering people. He's still baptizing with the Holy Ghost. He's still doing things. People don't want to even tarry anymore. It's time to get there and seek the Lord like you've never sought God before. Terry means to stay there. Wait, wait on the promise of God. You need God's power just like I need his power every day. I don't need his power once in a while. I need him every day. Amen. You know, we got to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold to eternal life. And that's through the word of God. Amen. Let me read Hebrews 4 and 12 for you real quick. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, you know what a two-edged sword will do. You've seen some of these sword fight pictures that both sides of the blade cut, and it's so pointed that it'll pierce right into the flesh and go right into and inject into the flesh until the blood comes out. Well, the word of God cuts the same way. That's why when you tell people what the words say, it cuts them. It pierces their mind. It pierces down in their soul and they get angry because they're in a place that they shouldn't be in. And if you obey and be in the place where God wants you to be, when the word of God comes, it won't pierce you. It will not pierce you. We need God's word and his commandments and his statutes. The word is a light unto the pathway, David said. The word guides you, directs you, helps you. It strengthens you. But you need the word for yourself. Going to church and getting just what they give you over the pulpit is not enough. Just like you eat two and three meals a day to nourish up your physical, you're going to need to eat the word of God every single day, morning, noon, and night, if you can. I know some people, they can't. But if you can, you get into the word. You take a break, at least take a, get a few scriptures on the inside of you. Meditate on those scriptures. Go out through the day thinking about the word of God. It's important. We need this word. We need this word more than ever before. If you look at Genesis and go to, to Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth off of his word. He didn't take his hand and it was his word. When God says something, it's created. When God say it is, it is. And when God says this is going to happen, trust me, it's going to happen. Those prophets, 
back in the old days, the old time, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, um, Isaiah, and many other prophets, when they prophesied, they prophesied things against the people of God because they refused to be obedient to God. It's a wonderful thing to obey God and see what God creates in your life by obeying him. Amen. Let me keep reading. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. It's powerful. The word of God is powerful. It's more powerful than a locomotive. My God, it's more powerful than a, a, a semi tractor trailer truck or a demolition crew. Amen. The word of God is piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. My God, the word of God will connect you. The word of God will slice you. The word of God will rearrange you. It will mold you and shape you into what God wants you to be. And believe me, you, when you are molded and shaped the way God wants you to be, honey, nobody and nothing by no means can hurt you. And of the joints and marrow, it gets all on the inside of you. I know many of you read what David, where, where Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. The word of God will get in you. Oh, my goodness. It gets down all on the inside, honey. Woo, make you feel good. It'll make you dance. It'll make you shout. It'll make you jump. And you don't have to worry about nobody coming to church, pumping you up, trying to get you to sing, trying to get you to praise God, trying to get, honey, when you get the word, the word of God down in the depths, you feel sometimes the word in there and the spirit, it gets you hot. You feel it all down on the inside of the belly. Amen and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. It will, uh, honey, let me say this. The word of God know what you're thinking of. The spirit of God will give a person something to say, especially when you're thinking wrong. It's for the thoughts of the mind and the intent of the heart. It's to to correct you, to rebuke you, to reshape you, to remold you, and to make you a godly man or woman. I am so honored today that you have joined me in this walk of the word. I'm so grateful to God to be able to do something like this. Like I said, 30 years of my life, I've never been able to say anything before anybody like this until God said, go. Amen. I've traveled to many nations and taught many things to many nations. And many of them would say, we never, nobody teaches us like this. And I tell them that you're avoiding the word. You're taking the word out. The word is more important than singing and dancing. Some places I go to, they sing three hours. They sing a half an hour, an hour, and give the man and woman of God 15, 20 minutes. That is not enough. That means you're not hungry for the word. But I'm grateful to you for joining me in today's broadcast of Today Christian Speaks. We're talking about the commandments of God. I only touched on a, a, a couple of things. But as you know, when the spirit of God speaks and moves, then now I have to go in the direction in which he say. That's why I don't have a script. I don't have something written out for you. But I thank God for this opportunity I thank God for you listening. And I hope and pray that you will continue to watch us from time to time. Of course, I'll upload videos from our past shows so that we can keep you informed on the word of God. I won't give you anything else but the word. I won't give you songs and singing. I won't give you that because you need the word. You need the instructions from God. You need the instructions of righteousness. Some of you need to be reproved, rebuked. Many of you need to be corrected because you're walking a life that God's not pleasing with. This is me, T.C., Tony Coleman, giving you another version of Today Christian Speaks. I'll see you next time right here on Facebook and even YouTube. You go to our YouTube channel. YouTube is today. The YouTube channel is Today Christian Speaks. 
Join us right there on YouTube. We'll be glad to see you. God bless you, and I hope to see you next time right here on Today Christians Speak. God bless you.